you have your Bibles, go ahead and and turn near in. And hey, maybe this is your first day joining us. Come on, we we've been walking the scriptures, going from chapter one, chapter two, and we'll be doing this for the next few weeks together. And yesterday, come on, somebody say yesterday we were reminded, family, as it as the Israelites, excuse me, were beginning to cross the Jordan River that day, God told the told, excuse me, told Joshua to go, hey, assign 12 men, come on, and go back and grab the stones, grab and grab the stones and, and make a memorial so that you can remember. So we were being reminded that our story is the stone that God wants us to embrace. Come on, just hug your story today. Embrace your story because you're going to be reminded through that, that God is faithful. Come on, they've been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Come on, that's a mighty long time. And hey, maybe you're in a season right now, and I want to lean into this because maybe you're in a season right now where you've been wandering in your mind. You've been wandering with ideas. Come on, you've been, you've been wandering in your spirit, and now you believe that God is speaking to you. This is the time to take a step. And one of the ways to move in, in a pattern of boldness is to recall, to, to call to remembrance of the faithfulness that God has already done in your life. When we embrace our story, we see the DNA that God has been moving, that he is faithful. So now we pick up together in, in chapter five. I, I, I'm really going to enjoy this time uh, in the morning. Here's why. Come on, can I be a little bit transparent? Because Normally on Sundays, come on, we, we, we sit with God. I'm talking to the preachers in the room right now. Come on, we, we hear from God. And of course, you guys know me, whatever God is saying, I'm, I'm going to preach it. But sometimes you're like, you know what? I, I don't want to preach that. I, that not, I, I don't want to preach that. And people are not going to like that. I'm going to preach something a little bit more entertaining. You know, come on, you have those temptations. I'm just being honest. And, and you guys know my heart. Now, I'm going to preach what God tells me to preach. But what I love about Bible study, whoo. What I love about our Devo, we're we're not going to jump around the scriptures. No, we're we're going straight through. And and today is going to be one of them days uh, of something that you normally won't get preached on a Sunday. But God, I believe God has some revelation for us this morning. And we're getting ready to jump in. And that's what I love about his word. And we're going to pick up right here in Joshua 5, verse 1. Joshua 5, verse 1. And I'm going to be reading from the CSB, the CSB, and it picks up, it said, when all the Amorites kings across the, across the Jordan to the west and all the Canaanites kings near the sea heard how the Lord had dried up the water on the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over, they lost heart. And their courage failed because of the Israelites. Come on. They haven't even defeated any enemy in the new land yet. Come on. But the word got out. I, that, that's what God wanted me to tell you today. Come on. The, the word got out that I'm coming. The word got out that God is sending some people and already the enemy is shaking in his boots. Come on. I, I, I speak that over your life today, my friend. Come on. You want to know why you're under attack? Come on. You want to know why you've been marked? Come on. Because God is moving in your life. And anytime you are a threat to the enemy's ground, to the enemy's territory, the enemy is really shaking. He's screaming. He's ruined. But to be honest, his heart is failing. He's losing courage because he knows. Come on, somebody. He knows that God is on his way. He knows the track record of our God. He understands. He knows our God is sovereign. He knows when our God shows up, something is getting ready to happen. God is getting ready to increase. Come on, and the enemy is getting ready to decrease. The word has gotten out about what's getting ready to happen. Receive that today. Sit in that word right now for your own life. Begin to declare some things over 2024 that the word has gotten out about me. 
that the word has gotten out that my family is moving in the right direction. Come on. The word has gotten out about me, about my marriage, about my health, about, about my business, about my mind. Come on. And the enemy, come on, somebody. And the enemy is shaking in his boots. Come on. His heart is failing and, and, and they didn't even cross. I mean, they didn't even step into the land yet. They are in Gilgal, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about Gilgal today. But the enemy is already the enemy is already shaking because the enemy knows you have been marked. Can you receive that today? I, I want to move, but somebody needs to receive that real quick. You've been marked, my friend. You've been marked by God. Can I say this? But you've been chosen by God. And when you are chosen by God, there, 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 there's going to be some warfare. Come on, can we preach it right this morning? You're going to go through some storms. You're going to feel some rains. The wind is going to blow. It's going to feel unjust. It's going to feel like you're not being treated fair. Because when the enemy knows that you have been marked by God, the enemy knows he has to do what? One, he has to distract you. Can I say that? The enemy knows he has to, oh, oh, I got to get her off of her spot. I, I can't allow him to sit on on that spot because if he can, if he continues to sit on that spot, he's going to understand who he really is. He's going to understand what his business can do. If he really sits in that spot and, and, and commune with God a little bit too long, he's going to wake up in this year. And I can't allow her to wake up this year because if she wakes up, her, her, her family is going to wake up. And if her family wakes up, that neighborhood is going to wake up. And if that neighborhood wakes up, come on, somebody, generations are getting ready to wake up. And this is why the enemy has to get you off of your spot. He has to, he has to make sure you lose your focus in your heart. You lose your focus in your mind because when you catch a revelation from God and when your heart, oh my gosh, when your heart is enlightened, what Ephesians teaches us of the calling that God has on your life, now you begin to move in a powerful way. Can I say it that way? You begin to move in an intentional way. You begin to move in a purposeful way. You begin to move at the unction. And woo of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit moves under that guidance, come on, things have to change. Come on. Jericho walls have to fall. And this is why the enemy has to make sure he gives you some pushback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he wants to give you some pushback. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but even early in 2024, you've been receiving some pushback. You're not understanding the season that you are in right now. You don't understand the more you give, the more it gets messed up. The more you try to walk in his light, the more it gets messed up. And it's because it is, my friend, you've been mocked. And the enemy knows you're coming, but you can't quit. You got to keep stepping. You got to keep going. You got to keep dreaming. Come on, somebody walk with me this morning. Come on, because we're going somewhere in chapter five. You, you got to keep praying. Come on. You got to keep teaching. You got to keep believing. You can't turn back there. You can't go back to Egypt. No, 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 my friend. The only direction is forward now. Come on. We already crossed the river. The only direction is forward. I can't go back to Egypt. There's nothing in Egypt for me but to be a slave, but to be under oppression, but to be locked up with chains. Where I'm going to go? I'm going back to Egypt. I'm going back to the wilderness. God, you say you're not even in the wilderness no more. You dried up the manna. So where I'm going to go, God, the only direction I can go under your provision is forward. Come on, say it with me this morning, family. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward in my posture to receive the very thing that God has for me and my family. I'm moving forward in my thinking. I'm moving forward in my mentality. Come on. I, I, I'm moving forward of, of, of releasing some negative things in my life. Yeah. I'm moving forward with choosing God early in the morning. Come on, 7 a.m. crew. Come on. I'm moving forward in this. I'm I'm moving forward in relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no more relationships that's just gonna drain me and pull me down and and not really showcase who I am. I told you a couple of days ago. Come on, your energy comes with currency, and you can't just be out here spending your currency just with anybody. Come on, protect your space in this year, my friend. Why? Because you're moving forward, and the enemy knows. 
and the enemy knows that you are on your way. And he goes into verse number two, and it says, at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites men again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelites men at Gibeth, Gibeth Haraleth. And, and, and well, let me park, uh, park out right there. Whoo, come on. Circumcise the men again. Come on, we, we, we understand the text even from the history. Can I go back a little bit? From the history of our faith of being Christians in Judea, Judea and we understand through, through the history of what circumcision is. And we understand it's the circumcision is actually, can I say it this way and in, in a, in a sum it up a little bit, the circumcision actually is an is a outer sign of an inner covenant. Let me say that again. Walk with me. Circumcision is an outer sign of an inner covenant. Yeah, yeah. So in other words, it's the cutting of a way. See, even in a, a health perspective, we understand understand what uh, excuse me what circumcision is. Come on, and can you understand this real quick? Come on, holler back at me, man. Come on, let's keep it real this morning. This is why I love the scriptures. We're not gonna jump around. Uh-uh, we're going in. <laughs> Come on, talk back to me, man. In other words, in in order to go possess the land, <laughs> these some grown men in chapter number five. Let me let me calm it down a little bit. Cause I'm getting passionate right now. These some grown men in chapter number five, and God said, "Go circumcise yourself, because you're getting ready to step into something. So I need to cut away something." Mm. Okay, God. Okay, okay. Did, did I hear you right? Um, I, I I know where we're going. Do we do we have to do that? <laughs> do we do, do 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 we have to do that? Can can you imagine the pain that they had to pay in order to step into something new? I want you to walk with me. I want you to walk. We're not going to jump around the scriptures because because we see circumcision throughout the scriptures, all the way from Genesis, all the way to Revelation. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. And let me frame it up again, because here we, we, we walk in the scriptures together today, my friend, because circumcision, let me say it again, it's the cutting away, it's an it's a, it's a, it's a outer sign of an inner covenant. Can I get baptism? Is an outer sign of an inner declaration. Come on, are you walking with me? Sometimes God has to show it on the outside of what's going already happening in the inside. It's the it's the cutting away because, friend, can I say it this way? You can never step into the next dimension without going through a change. And sometimes, my friend, change is not easy. See, change is not easy. And, and God is saying, I, I have to cut away some things so that you can step into a new thing. Whew. And sometimes we don't want change to really happen in our life. We don't want to lay on the altar long enough so God can do some circumcision on our heart. We don't want to, we don't really want to lay on the altar a little bit too long because all of us in here, let me raise my hand today, because we all can be stubborn in certain areas where we really don't want God to do circumcision. We really don't want God to actually cut away the thing that he needs to cut away. But God is pausing enough right now, my friend to begin to do something with Israel that's getting ready to push them into something beautiful. And God is saying, I got to pause because you still got a little bit of too, too much of Egypt inside of you. I wonder today, come on, family. I wonder if you could do something. You can ask yourself, if you can write that down, what does Egypt look like to me today? What, what, what's the Egypt inside of me, the slave mentality? Come on, the oppression, come on that I'm not able to fully, it's not allowing me to walk in freedom. What, what, what's the Egypt inside of you? And God is saying that, hey, I'm getting ready to cut some stuff so that you can walk forward. I, I want your mind to be free. I want your heart to be free. Come on, I, I want you to be able to dream and create. I, I, want you to be, I want you to be free, but in order to be free, you got to cut some things out of your heart because change is not easy. See, life can get complicated today 
when God is trying to initiate change. Life can get complicated when God is trying to, he, he wants to initiate change and change can be painful. Come on, let that sink in. Change is sometimes painful. And God is saying, I, I got to cut it away, but it's, it's going to be painful. See, this is what pruning is all about. <laughs> This is what Jesus was talking about in, in the gospel. It's a pruning season. Maybe maybe today is a pruning season for you. And, and Jesus is saying, I, I got to cut some things back so that you can grow a little bit faster. I got to cut some things back so that you can grow a little bit higher. I, I got to cut that a little bit back. I'm cutting you not because you're not producing. I'm cutting you because I'm calling you to a higher degree to grow. See, we don't sometimes come. Sometimes we don't want to teach this. We don't want to teach that long suffering actually produces something in his scriptures. You're going to uh, you're going to experience some suffering. Can we teach the scriptures right this morning? Family, you are going to go through some suffering. But the Bible teaches us that long suffering produces something. And maybe you're in a producing season right now. It is all about your perspective that begins to change because maybe God is he, maybe God is allowing me to go through a season so that he can produce something on the other side. Maybe God is allowing me to go through a season because he's actually cutting out some things from the past that doesn't need to walk into my new season. Maybe God is allowing me to go through a season because I got a little bit of too much baggage with me. Come on. You've been paying too much money to travel on this airplane. <laughs> Come on, you're, you're in the security line. You're putting your bags down. They're like, no, miss, no, only two bags. And you got about five, six, seven bags. They're not going to fit in a carry-on. Come on. Yo, you got too many personal, personal items, and God is saying it's time to get rid of some things. It's time to let loose some things. It's time to let go of some things. Because the price that you're paying is a little bit too much. I, I need you to release some things. And God is saying, lay right here. Lay right here on my altar long enough so that I can cut away so that you can fly a little bit higher. Lay right here on my altar so that I can cut away so that you can be a little bit lighter. And maybe you've been walking in a season and you've been wondering and you've been and wandering and, and God is saying, I'm getting ready to release something, but I need you to cut it away. Perhaps God is taking you to a place he knows you are not fully prepared for. So in, that, in order to prepare you for it, he has to cut you for it. Mm. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. In order for God to prepare you for it, sometimes God has to cut you for it. And, and my friend, there's always going to be a price that you pay in order to move into the next dimension. See, see, this is why this is why you may not fully understand when we look at certain people. This is why the Bible teaches us not to compare ourselves, because you never know the season that they had to walk through in order to get to the position that they are in in that life. Come on, I speak a word to, a, to leaders right now. This is why I salute pastors. Come on, I salute business leaders. I, if you're in charge of anything, I, I salute you. And if you're successful, I salute you even more because I don't, I don't even know your story, but I know you went through some things to get there. Come on, come on, just put that in the chat, amen. I'm talking to your life right now. Everybody don't know what you have gone through to get to where you are right now. They don't know the storms and the hell that you had to go through. They don't know the sleepless nights that you had to go through and you lost some stuff on the way. You, you got cut on the way. You got abused on the way. Come on, you went through some confusion and some storms and some fires. They don't understand why you rejoice like you rejoice because this didn't happen overnight. No, I had to go through some stuff. I was bleeding on the way. <laughs> While I was smiling, I was bleeding. Come on. While I was smiling, come on, I was leaking blood, but I was traveling, trusting God. Come on. And in order to get this, sometimes God has to cut you on the way. Mm, we're walking this out. We're walking this out. Come on. See, see, it's going to cost you something to be whatever God has called you to do. It's going to cost you something 
in, in, in order to walk in the fulfillment that God has called you to do. Come on, let me walk this out. It's gonna cause, it's gonna cost you something to be a mom. It's gonna cost you something to, to be a husband. It's gonna cost you something to, to walk in that single life. It's gonna cost you something to run that business. Come on, I, I'm speaking to your life right now. It, it's gonna cost you something. You're, you're going to get cut somewhere on the journey. It just doesn't happen overnight. It's going to cost you something. Yes, Jesus paid the price. There's only one sacrifice. But on our way to our journey, our destination, it's going to cost you something. Freedom is never free. Mm. And you're going to lose some things on the way. And just like the Israelites getting ready to step and getting ready to go against their biggest battle, God had to cut them in order to prepare them. Yeah. Can you imagine? Come on, take your mindset to Joshua right now. My biggest battle is getting ready to come up. My, my, my biggest test is getting ready to come up. God, come on, I, I'm going through some things right now. This is Joshua. I got a big test that's getting ready to come up. And right before my biggest test, God, you're cutting me. Mm. Right at my biggest test, it feels like I'm getting weaker, actually. Right at my biggest test, it actually feels like I'm decreasing in a season where I feel like I should, I, I need to be increasing for myself, for my family, for my life, for my mental, for my business, for my job. At the time where I actually need to be elevating and being on my best game, I'm actually being cut. I'm, I'm actually decreasing. You ever been in a season of your life where it seems that when you need to be at your best all hell breaks loose. Woo. Where, where you actually need to be on your A game, where you actually need to be sharp because you got a presentation come, coming up and you need to be, you got this project that you need to do and you just need to be at your best and you can't even sleep at night. Mm. You need to be at the best and your mind is just not sharp. You're just not there. And, and, and could it be that God is actually using that season to shape you? and form you and produce you because I'm saying it again so it can stick right here in your heart. In order for God to send you, sometimes he has to cut you because cutting is the cutting of a way so that something new can grow. Mm, 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 mm. And this is what we're walking out. This is what, this is what we're walking out because whatever he's calling you to do, it's going to cost you something. Going to going to verse number three, going to verse number three, it says, so Joshua made, he made the flint knife. I'm sorry, verse number four. This is the reason, this is the reason Joshua circumcised them. Watch the reason, watch the reason of the, of, of the circumcision. All the people who have came out of Egypt were males. All the men of war had died in the wilderness along the way after they had come out of Egypt. Through all the people who came out of, came out were circumcised none of the people born in the wilderness along the way were circumcised after they had come out of Egypt for the Israelites wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the nations men of war who came out of Egypt have died off because they did not obey the Lord mm -mm -mm. this is powerful this is powerful this is powerful I want you to watch I want you to watch I want you to watch this. Let me grab my notes real quick. I want you to watch this because I, I, I want to set this up because I, I, I want you to watch. This is the cutting away. This is what God is saying. I, I, I'm cutting some things away. I, I, I'm cutting I'm cutting some things away. I, look in your life. Let me pause. Let me. I, I want to move to my next point real quick, but God is saying, no, no, stay park right here just a little bit longer. Let's camp out a little bit longer because I'm cutting some things away because there, there, there's still Egypt in you. I'm cutting some things away. Here's this. I'm going to be teaching a little bit, a little bit about this on Sunday as we travel through the tabernacle. Watch this, because this is powerful, friend. Here's why. Here's why. Because they they were under. Oh my gosh. They, they they were under the oppression of the Egyptians 400 years. This is four generations. 
this is why my God, this is four generations of separated from actually being in God's presence and worshiping him. 400 years of being under a false identity. Mm. 400 years of not actually walking in his unction and his instructions. This is why God is saying, when he told him in the wilderness, do everything that I say, do accordingly. He's saying this, not just so that, so that they can walk in his power. He's saying this because they got old behaviors. He's saying this because they have old patterns. He's saying this because I, I know what you've been under for some years and you've been walking in a false identity and maybe your life, maybe your family has exposed you to some wrong things. And sometimes the things that we have been exposed to, we actually become and we live out. And sometimes we do it so organically, we don't even know that we do it. We have mannerisms that we, in our body. <laughs> The way there's stuff that our family do that we do that's actually not of God. Come on, me too. Come on. And God is saying, I got to separate you for a season, cut it out of you so that I can send you because you've been sitting under some false things a little bit too long. Mm, you've been sitting under some false teachings a little bit too long. You've been sitting under your own false ideology a little bit too long. That's not who you are. That's not what I called you to. I know you're walking in that shame and guilt, but but my friend, that that's not God. That's not his calling for you. I, I know that happened back there, and, and you're saying I can't move into that direction. I can never do this because I walked through this. No, 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 no. God said, I, Jesus said it this way. I didn't come to condemn the world. I came to save the world. And Jesus said, I pay the price so that you can walk in. I am that this cutting that, that they're getting ready to go through is getting ready to be another better cutting that we're all experience. And that's the one and only cutting sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So now God would take you to a season to cut some things away. But he goes into this because this is powerful because circumcision is necessary for us to get in circumcision is necessary for us to get in. Write this down in Ephesians 4.31. Ephesians 4.31 says it this way in a New Living Translation. It says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Mm, circumcision. Circumcision. See, sometimes we stay in seasons too long, family, because we refuse to get rid of the things that God is calling us to get rid of. Sometimes we stay in seasons a little bit too long because we refuse to lay on his altar and actually allow him to cut it away. See, I want to lean right in there. That's what the Holy Spirit has is that. Thank you for the gift of conviction, Holy Spirit. Here's what conviction is. Conviction is, is, is God convincing us that we should walk in this direction. So the Holy Spirit is a gift to all of us. It is our God to, it's a gift to all of us so that it can convict, convict convict us so that it can convince us that this is the way that in the power that we should walk in. My friend, allow the Holy Spirit to convict you today. It's a beautiful thing. Convict us of everything that does not belong to you. Holy Spirit, show us the things that need to be cut out of our life. Holy Spirit, show us the things that we need to get rid of so that we can fully possess everything that you have for us. See, this is the powerful thing. And this is, a, I want to give some points. I want to give some points for anybody, anyone who's in a pruning season right now. If you feel like you're in a pruning season right now, I want, I want to give you, I want to give you two points. Because this is what Jesus said in John 15, verse 1. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch enemy that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. But every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it, that it may bear more fruit. 
I believe you're in a season in this year that God is getting ready to produce more fruit, much fruit in your life. But sometimes to go forward, he has to cut you. Point number one is this. Pruning is the reward of having something of value. Mm. Pruning is the reward of having something of value. God only prunes the ones that have fruit. So if you feel like God is cutting you, it's the, for a reason because God has said, I have you right where I want you. And now I need to cut some more things out so that you can go forward. My second point is this. God doesn't cut to kill. He cuts to heal. Mm. God doesn't cut to kill. He cuts to heal. And just as he's getting ready to move Israelites into it to possess Jericho, God decided to cut them, cut it away. The cutting away was not to kill them. Mm. The cutting away was actually to heal them from all of the pain of their past. The pain of the wilderness. The pain of the oppression of the from Egypt. The, 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 I, I need to heal you. I need to remove you from that because I'm getting ready to do a new thing. And I believe that's a word for somebody today. Maybe 2023 was a pruning season. It was a setup season for what God is getting ready to do. And maybe already in 2024, you're feeling like, man, the first couple of weeks, it's a pruning season, God. Feel like some things are cutting away. I'm not understanding. And maybe if we shift our perspective, we can see that God has us in a process. And remember, I told you a few days ago, come on, before the promise comes the process. And maybe God, and maybe part of your process is for God to cut some things so that he can heal some things. I pray that over your life today. Walk with that, chew on that, sit with that, and allow the Holy Spirit to produce something beautiful inside of each and every one of you. Love you guys so much. Come on, come on. That is awesome. That is beautiful. Thank you for your word, Heavenly Father.